Welcome back guys. Today we're going to learn how to correctly run Docker on Windows 11. To run Docker on Windows, there is few ways. You can either run it using the Docker legacy Hyper-V backend or you could use WSL2, which offers a much better performance and stability when using it on Windows. The Windows system for Linux WSL lets you run a Linux environment directly on Windows without needing to use virtual machines or dual boot setup. This allows you to fully take advantage of running Linux directly on your Windows machine. It's faster, it consumes less resources than running a virtual machine. It's integrated, which means that you can directly access all your files on your Windows machine. If you're planning to run Docker on Windows, then it's highly recommended that you use WSL2 for your Docker desktop backend as you can leverage Linux workspaces and avoid having to maintain both a Linux and Windows build scripts. To install WSL, we're going to go to Google and in here you want to search for Microsoft WSL. It should be the first result under the domain learn.microsoft.com and in here you should have all the instructions to install WSL. For the most part, you're going to open your PowerShell and you'll want to execute this statement. For the PowerShell, you have to open it as an administrator. So let's go ahead and search for PowerShell and let's run as administrator. Now in here, you want to run WSL install. I already have WSL installed for me locally. For the most part, once this command finishes executing, you'll want to restart your computer. When you're done restarting your computer, you will see this prompt. In here, you will want to enter your username for your Ubuntu default WSL2 instance. I'm gonna call mine EMAD. Now let's go ahead and set our password. And that should be it for the installation part. Before we dive further, it's important that you create a WSL config file. The WSL config file allows you to configure all your Linux distributions running in WSL2. You can use it to do things like limit the memory and processors for your WSL distributions. To create a WSL config file, we're going to go to our C drive, users, and you want to go to your main users folder. And here you want to create a new file. Let's go ahead and open notepad and I'm going to copy this location and let's go ahead and save a new file inside our main user directory. For the type, you're gonna select all files and for the name, you want to add .wsl config. In here, you want to add square brackets and you want to write WSL2. Under here, we're going to set our options for memory, you want to make sure you select a reasonable number depending on how much RAM you have. You don't want WSL to max out all your RAM and making your computer not usable. The other option is processors. And for this one, you can limit how many processors you want your WSL to use. You can say four, for example, two. For me, I'm going to leave it out. Let's go ahead and save this file. And you want to make sure it's inside your main user directory folder. Now, at any moment you want to access your default WSL distribution inside your file explorer, you want to go ahead and add two backslashes and write WSL in a dollar sign. And here you can see this is our distribution Ubuntu. You can click on it and here you're able to browse your Linux instance. Also inside your file explorer, if you scroll down, you should be able to see this section here. It's brand new once you install WSL. If you collapse it, you should see your distribution in here. Obviously, if you have more than one distribution, you will see them under here. Let's go ahead and open our command prompt. In here, let's go ahead and see what's the status of our WSL distributions. So I'm going to write WSL, two dashes, and list. In here, you should see we only have one Ubuntu distribution and it is set to the default. Now, if you write WSL, list again and then here write verbose you should see the status of your WSL instance so mine is stopped if you want to start your instance there's multiple things you can do inside the command prompt you can write WSL tilde and now you can see here that we are logged in as our user emad 
So if you write ls-la, you should see your Linux directory files. Let's go ahead and write exit to exit our instance. Another way to start your WSL distribution is by clicking on it in here. Once you open this folder, it will automatically start. Another way to connect to your instance is you're going to go to your Windows and you want to search for Ubuntu. And you should find this installed, Ubuntu on Windows. If you open this, it will open the terminal to your WSL instance. So let's do ls-la and you can see we are inside our WSL Ubuntu instance. Now let's go ahead and exit this and let's go ahead and open our command prompt. In here, you want to write WSL two dashes list and do the verbose option again. So you can see our instance is stopped. I'm going to open our Ubuntu terminal. So I have it open right here and let's go ahead and write WSL list verbose and you should see we have a running status. Now to shut this down from the terminal, you can write WSL two dashes shut down. And you, if you see here on the bottom, my terminal was closed automatically. Let's go ahead and write WSL list verbose and you should see our instance has stopped. If you have Docker installed, you can go ahead and skip this step. Let's go ahead and go to docker.com. In here, just go ahead and click download Docker desktop. Once that's done, go ahead and run this and install Docker. Once the installer is done, you will have to restart your computer. Once you restart your computer, you should see this screen pop up. You want to go ahead and accept and we should be able to see that Docker is working. So right now, Docker desktop is starting and let's go ahead and skip the tutorial and we have Docker working. For this step, we want to make sure that our Docker is using WSL and we turn on Docker Compose version 2. In the user interface, you want to go ahead and click on settings on the top right. In here, you want to make sure that you have this flag enabled. Use the WSL2 based engine. Scroll down all the way and you want to go ahead and select use Docker Compose v2 and click apply and restart. This is an optional step, but I highly recommend that you guys install the WSL extension for VS Code. The WSL extension will let you use VS Code in WSL as you just would when you use your Windows. Inside Visual Studio Code, you want to go to Extensions. In here, search for WSL. And you should find the first result by Microsoft. Open this and you want to go ahead and install this extension. Once you have the WSL extension for VS Code installed, you can go ahead and click on Terminal on the top, click New Terminal. In here, you should be able to see that you have this Ubuntu WSL terminal. Click here, and this should take you inside your default Linux distribution. For us, it's Ubuntu. Now, inside this terminal, let's go ahead and write CD tilde. So this will take us to our home directory. Let's do ls-la, and you should see that we are inside our Linux Now we're going to learn how to use Docker with WSL. For this, you're going to need to download a project. If you have any projects available, you can use those. If you don't, you want to go to google.com, search for GitHub, Emad Zamut, Z-A-A-M-O-U-T. This is my GitHub account. It should be the first link in here. And in here, you want to go to repositories and there's multiple projects you can pull. Let's go ahead and pull the Laravel complete Dockerization project. Copy the URL. Now we're going to go to our terminal in here, click start and search for Ubuntu. And you want to open the Ubuntu terminal in here. Let's go ahead and see what's inside our main directory. All right. Now in here, I'm going to create a new folder. Let's call it workspace and let's go ahead and go inside our folder. And in here, let's go ahead and create another folder for our projects. And I'm going to call it Laravel Docker example. Let's go inside that project and let's do git pull and you want to paste this URL here. Before we can pull our repository, we have to run git init first. Now let's go ahead and pull our project. Let's go ahead and do ls-la and you can see we have all our files in here. Now to open VS Code, there's multiple ways to do this. I'm going to start with the easiest way. Go ahead and open VS Code. You could go here, open folder and on the top here, you want to search for two backslashes WSL in a dollar sign. In here, you want to select your Ubuntu. And in here, you want to go to home, your user, and you can see our folder in here, workspace. 
and you can open this in here. Now, when you do, when you launch this the first time, you will see this prompt, and let's go ahead and press all authors. Now, when you open it this way, you will see this notification in here, and this will tell you that you should open this project in WSL, and it will give you the option to do that here. So you can click here, and it will relaunch Visual Code, and you can see here this label WSL Ubuntu. So right now we are directly inside our VS code. Now let's go ahead and close our VS code. Now another way to launch your projects inside WSL in VS code, you can go to your terminal. So let's find Ubuntu. And in here, let's go to our projects folder. So I'm gonna do LS, I'm gonna go inside workspace. I'm gonna go inside my project folder. And now you can run code dot, and this will open visual code in the current directory. And if you do it from WSL, it will open it directly using WSL. This is how I recommend you should always open your projects. Now let's test if Docker is working. Let's go ahead and click on the terminal here. Let's click new terminal. And now let's do ls-la in here. Make sure we are inside our projects. And let's clear this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write docker compose ps. Let's see what's the status. Now when you get this error, when you try to run any docker command inside your Linux distribution, the command docker could not be found in this WSL2 distro. What you want to do is you want to open your docker interface. In here, you want to go to settings and go to resources, the last option, WSL integration. In here, if you see there is a checkbox for Ubuntu, you want to go ahead and check this. Click apply and restart. And once this is done, let's go ahead and go back to our terminal and write Docker PS. And you can see now Docker is working. Let's go ahead and run our sample project. So I'm going to write Docker compose up dash D. Now it looks like I got this notification here. You will have to allow Docker in your firewall. And let's go ahead and run our docker compose up dash d flag again. If you get this error, which you shouldn't be getting this error, you'll just need to rename this file docker here to lowercase docker. You shouldn't be getting this error because this is uh, something that I fixed in my branch. All right, now here you see that we're getting permission denied error inside this file. You should be seeing this error. Now, this is very common when you're pulling projects from GitHub for the first time. Obviously, those will not have the correct permission set. Let's do ls dash la and let's take a look at our permissions in here. Let's go ahead and go inside our Docker folder. So we're going to do CD Docker. Let's do ls-la here. And you can see this file, it lacks permission. To fix this, you want to write chmod plus x and the file that you want to grant permission to. And it's going to be our entry point.sh. Now let's go back to our project main directory and let's run docker compose up dash d again. And looks like it's working. Let's check our containers status. So I'm going to write docker compose ps. Now it looks like we have some errors when we're trying to build some of our containers. Let's go ahead and open Docker. And here you should see your project. Let's just check out the logs quickly. I'm going to go to my PHP container. And in here, it looks like we're having some more permission errors. Let's go ahead and go to our terminal. In here, let's go ahead and do ls-la. And if you take a look here, our vendor folder and our node modules folder, these are being created as the root user. This is very common problems that you will have when you use uh, Docker on WSL. So to fix this, we're going to write shown. So C-H-O-W-N. You want to write your username. In my case, it's Emad, colon Emad. And we want to set our user for the vendor folder. If you get this error, you just want to do it with sudo. And you want to do the same thing for the node modules folder. And let's do ls-la to confirm. And you should see that our vendor folder user is changed from root to our current instance user. Let's go ahead and write docker compose up dash d. And once that's done, let's give this a try. Let's go to our browser. Let's go to 127.0.0.1 at port 8000. And you should be able to see this Laravel project. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's send a message. And you can see this is using WebSockets. So it's basically a live chat application. Let's connect another user and let's send a message. Let's say hi. Now let's go to the other page and you can see without refreshing the page that we have our messages in here. Thank you for watching guys. If you found this tutorial useful, click on the like button. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post it on the comment down below and we'll see you on the next video.